Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I'm Kelly Stewart, joined by Vegas runner Yanni the Greek, the man of many names, at Greek underscore gambler on Twitter. We're going to talk UFC on ESPN plus 25. Now, this is a smaller fight card. I don't recognize one name on this card, and that's just because I'm kind of a recreational MMA fan. Sure, sure. Right? The I, 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 like, I like the big names. I like the pay-per-views. Those are fun for me, but I don't really follow along. So this is going to be more for the MMA nuts. The hardcores. Okay, yeah, got it. Yeah. And you're right, because it's in between big pay-per-views. Like, we just come off a John Jones pay-per-view and we're heading into an even bigger pay-per-view next. And in between, you see a lot of these ESPN Fight Night cards. Some will have a main event or co-main with big names, some don't, you know? And, and it's more for the hardcore fan, and you're getting a lot more events, but that gives a lot and of betting opportunities. And that's kind of why they have them in smaller markets, right? Exactly. So this fight's in New Mexico, which is kind of odd to me that it's not even in a bigger city, but Again, as you mentioned, this is for more of the casual fans, the tickets that the everyday person can afford to exactly. go to, unlike the Connor fight where I'm going, there's no way I'm shelling out 800 bucks. And then having to fly to Vegas, pay for the rooms that weekend, it's, it's expensive for people. Absolutely. Okay, so talk to me about some of your favorite plays on this card. Yeah, there's, there's some value. Now, I'm coming off a bad last week of UFC. I mean, there was a lot of judging problems there, um, but the goal is to find value and win long term. And that's the key to, to all sports. And I think in MMA, because it's when you got one on one, people just think it's like pick the winner, you know, and it's it's the same, whether it's football, baseball, soccer, tennis, regardless whether it's a lot of a team sport or an individual sport, betting markets are the same. Markets are markets, and you have to look at it that way. So there's a couple sides that jumped out right away at me um, on the undercard. I, I like Scott Holtzman. The, the, the sharp money's gone against me. They're all over Jim Miller. That's the known name. I, I completely disagree with that. Now, he's looked good of late. This one being in high altitude like you touched on, I think if Holtzman could survive that first round, I, start, I think he starts to take over the fight. I, I like the, the size advantage with Holtzman. Um, I, I don't think Miller's going to be able to take him down and sub him as easily like he has the last two fights. So I think Holtzman offers some value there at minus 150. Um, Kenny versus uh, Marab. Again, that line went as high. Open 150 up to 225. Oh, now wow. Back down to 150, 160. I think if you got the dog at plus 180, I can understand it. But now that it's back down to like that 160 range, I think you got to look to the Marab side. Uh, now on the main cards where I, I already bet, uh, the one play I already made was on um, Paiva over De La Rosa. I, I bet that at minus 180. I bet it again at minus 200. Uh, it's sitting at around minus 210. I, I think that line should be closer to minus 300. I so really do. So at minus do. 210, still worth. I, yeah, point. because okay. I made my true line minus 300. I think he wins this fight three out of four times. Um, this should be a stand-up bout for definitely for this one. I don't think either man's really going to take it to the ground. Uh, and I like his height advantage. I like his reach advantage. I like his durability. And I think at that price. Believe it or not, even at minus 200, it's still low. Unfortunately, this card doesn't have a lot of underdog value. Okay. And value don't mean dogs. It just means finding a price where the true odds of cashing it differ from what that price says. And I think that's the case there. Uh, sharp side, Ray Borg. I piggyback that. He's getting a lot of steam. Uh, his opponent opened the minus 180 favorite. Borg's now minus 140 favorite. Huge difference. How often do we see that happen in the UFC? You see it in the UFC, Kelly. It's a great question because it doesn't take a lot of money to move these lines. Okay. And they don't have a lot of confidence in these numbers. So when they see a limit bet from a sharp account, even if it's a $300 limit bet, they start moving it. Because it's a respected player. Exactly. Okay. And that's what happens. So I piggybacked the Ray Borg action, but I didn't share that with subscribers because now he's a favorite. And I don't think there's value at minus 140. At plus money, I thought it was a steal, even at even money. But you, at lane 140, even if he wins, I don't think you're getting the best of it. Finally, I like Lando Venata. I bet him as an underdog. It's now even money. I think he should have been open the favorite. Uh, Madero's taking a lot of punishment in his last two fights. Hasn't been active. I think Venata wins this one. And you're going to want to pick on the main event. I there's one thing. This is a rematch that happened back in, what, 2015, I believe. Uh, we already know in the UFC, the fighter that wins the first fight wins the second one 62% of the time. Why is that? I, I honestly, you, I don't know. We if always it, hear in other team sports. It's that's so what I was going to say. Twice. I don't know how it translates into other sports. I don't know in MMA whether it's 
confidence that you have or you're forcing your opponent to change their game plan now. Because you already knew their original game plan and were able to beat and, them that And way. forcing someone to change what they do when they've learned something for years and now have to change it in a camp, I just think it becomes impossible. Okay. So I think that's why you see guys beat no, someone over and over. Plus, I think there's just some guys, they have their weakness. They don't fight well on the ground or they're not good strikers. And this guy just happens to be the antidote to that. Um, and in this case, where we have Corey Anderson, I don't see how Jan gets his revenge and wins this fight. Um, since Anderson's done good cutting his weight, he said, uh, handled that weight cut, his chin's been sturdy. That's been the only question with him, or else he's the next guy in line to face John Jones. Oh, and wow. I'd look to the Corey Anderson side if the price was right, believe it or not. Um, he's minus 200. It opened minus 150. If you got involved at minus 150, you got a great bet in your pocket, win or lose. At minus 200, I think you put in a parlay. I don't think it's worth laying the 200. I think the price is high, even though I do think Corey Anderson gets the job done. Awesome. Wager Talk TV users get $25 in wager bucks added to your account after your first purchase at either Wager Talk or sportsmemo.com.